an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM Certified Wellness Coach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Master Instructor Roundtable. I'm Marty Miller, Regional Master Instructor, and here with my dear friend, fellow Regional Master Instructor, Miss Wendy Batts. How's it going today, Wendy? It's going great, Marty. How are you? Awesome, awesome. I'm excited today, as always. I mean, I know I say that every Master Instructor Roundtable, but why wouldn't I be? But I know that uh, you had a good idea, as always, and you're like, hey, I'd like to talk about this. So really... This started with an idea that you had, if I'm not mistaken, coming from our Facebook page. Yes. And, you know, we really do appreciate all the feedback that our Facebook community or NAS and Facebook community brings to the table. And when there's a question that you have, we really want to be able to bring it um, to the forefront and spend some time talking about it to see if we can kind of help uh, give you some ideas or, you know, help you through something that maybe there um, is some, you know, there's some communication uh barriers that maybe you're not sure what to do. And this actually came from someone based on some stuff that Marty and I had said in, in the past. And we're talking about multifaceted approaches and opportunities in order to develop your, your business and grow your business and think about what is it that you're doing and where is it that you want to be? And we're going to kind of talk through a lot of that today. And so I'm very, very excited. Yeah. And this is interesting to me because it made me kind of look back at my career and also, as, as you know, my son Ryan's going through this. So I've had some of these conversations forward thinking for him, but retrospectively for me. And, you know, I had one path I thought I was going to take, but obviously because of the zigs and the zags. But the one thing that kid stayed consistent was if I surrounded myself with great people, great information, great education, and always looked to what was next for me, it's amazing how doors tend to open up. Yes, I, I'm the same way, Marty. I was planning on going a completely different path. I mean, still, I mean, it, it involved fitness and and helping people. Playing for but... Tennessee football was never in the cards. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I'm telling you, you know what? <laughs> Over the last 20 years, I probably could have been some help. However, hopefully we're looking at the bright side and this is going to be our year, Marty. <laughs> That's right. But you could have trained all those Tennessee players. Oh, my goodness. I know. But I say that every year. So anywho, moving on to what we're talking about today, we're really thinking about um, and talking about expanding your education in order to expand your career. And I think that the very first question that I have for every single person was, you know, when was the last time you reevaluated your career? And I know I got challenged by my mentor and this was one of the hardest things. And I do this often. But one of the hardest things that I ever had to do when I sat down with him and he's like, I want you to write, where do you want to be in a year, three years and five years, and then look ahead into are those on a path to get you where you want to be in 10? Well, I couldn't even think about what I was doing the following day, let alone think that far in advance. However, it really did open up my mind to, to make me think, OK, well, I really want to be able to do this and make this amount of money. And where was I? I was very far from that. And so, you know, it, with me writing it down and looking at it and actually having it in my face, it, it opened up so many different ideas for me of like, you know what, I can do this and I can go here. And if I take this class and I actually spend time working with this person and who is in our industry that's doing this well, um, that actually helped develop my career. And, um, and I'm very, very grateful for that that scare tactic. And I know that wasn't the intention, but, um, but I think it, it really did me a, a lot of benefit for sure. Right. And, and I love the picture you chose. I'm going to say that you chose it because you know, I want to drop in my quote that education's a race with no finish line. So thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> but, you know, I think the, the key point to this is having a game plan, right? I do mm -hmm. mine usually around Thanksgiving every year. I look forward on my education path. We've talked about that. How am I going to invest my continuing education money? Not how am I going to spend it, right? Spending things is an expense. I want to lay out my continuing education so it's more impactful to what my goals are. Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't. 
but you know, I think that's always helpful. So I've always done that kind of, um, you know, me, Wendy, I'm a data person. So I like to track numbers and I like to track things. So I'm in the same boat you are, but I think that's why you and I have been here with NASM for 17 years now, as I say that oh, with like, goodness, <laughs> right? Okay. But, we, yeah. but we had a plan. And again, I remember clearly the first time I got exposed to this information, I had the light bulb moment and I swear there's a true story. I'm like, if I can be the dumbest person in that room, life will be good for me. Cause I was so mm -hmm. impressed with the knowledge of the Mike Clarks and all the other people in the Rodney Corns. And I was like, I need to latch on to these people because I tell my boys and I think every parent does. And when do you know this being a parent, you know, different at your child's age, but you become the sum average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? Are they building you up? Are they mentoring you? Or are they distracting from maybe what you can fully achieve? So that's why, you know, it was never about necessarily making money from NASM in a career. It was, I just need to be around it. And mm -hmm. then again, look at all the opportunities that have come from choosing to understand that this is a path I have to take. Well, and, and that kind of brings us then to like the next bullet when I say, well, what are you passionate about? I mean, professionally, when I first met Marty, we were super passionate about the, the idea of NASM and what it had to offer. And because I knew all about the model, but it's like now that we have this, you know, this organization that wants to take it to the masses and wants to give someone a chance to be successful in our industry. When this industry, as we know, people come and go all the time. But how do you how do you stay in it and how do you you know stay relevant and how do you expand your services? And I think that was one of the things that I knew for myself when I actually did that reevaluation, I needed to go back to school. I needed to at least have my master's. I needed to go get my license in manual therapy to be able to do what I wanted to do in the state that I lived in legally. And so I already knew how to do the stuff, but I mean, mm -hmm. could I do it legally? And then could I market myself? I mean, I could have probably done it, but I wouldn't really been able to market myself. And I think too, that kind of brings us down to even the next one. Sorry to kind of bypass it, Marty, but, nope. but, you know, I wanted to, to be more then, and this is going to sound bad. I wanted to be more than just a trainer. I wanted to be able to do the manual therapy. I wanted to be able to look at someone and analyze every bit of their overhead squat that I learned from NASM. I wanted to use that solutions table to give me the, the path of what to roll, what to activate, um, and then how to integrate stuff in order to design a program. And then having the model that says, okay, if you see this, do that. And if you use this tempo, you're going to get this, this goal. So I followed it to a T and I think that's where when I see on the Facebook page or Marty, you hear this too, I took my certification, but now I don't know where to start. It's like, right. well, okay, now you've got to like apply the model. And, you know, if you don't, you're really not going to, you're not going to grow your business because you can't even grow your mindset on what to do. And so that's right. what I was really hoping for today is to try to help people kind of get, you know, kind of knock off the cobwebs and, and just dive in and commit to what you want to do. You know, and Wendy, knowing you for so long and all of our core people that have been in ASM for so long, like Tony and Ken Miller, I know I can probably speak for you on this behalf is I know you said you didn't want to be just a trainer, but I think what you and I were really trying to do was how do we evolve the profession to a higher standard? How do we maybe lead by example? How do we go out there and develop the career? So it is a career, not necessarily a job. And you and I have very similar stories. I got my master's knowing that would help me get in with NASM. I didn't know what my master's was necessarily going to bring me monetarily, but I knew that this was going to separate me. Then also, you know, I can say this. I remember when I got my doctorate, nobody in the company at that point had, had searched it out. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Blind faith. Because what bad, what is going to happen if I have my doctorate? And now I see, looking back, how many doors opened up. But I had to have that blind faith that I'm going to push the envelope. And you've done this tremendously, Wendy. And so many people in NESM is we're trying to, to take the profession and develop it and show how much more it can be. You can work at that personal training uh, side of things and, and have a very successful career. But that's not your only option anymore. Right. And then you just need to be clear of who, who are you? And I think that's too, sometimes we just get lost in, in who we are. And then we want to say, oh, well, I am this. And then I have all of these letters. Well, at the end of the day, you can have as many letters as you want behind, behind your name, but you've got to know who you are, who you represent and what you want to be in our industry, in your community, in your home, even 
Um, and, and then you've got to walk the walk in order to do it successfully. And I think, you know, that's where, when we start talking about, you need to be clear on, on the services that you offer. And we're going to go into more detail as we go through the different slides, but that's going to help with your pricing because you know what, we want to make sure that you're priced correctly. But then again, if you don't really know what you offer, then, then you really can't put a price around not knowing what your services are. And so, so I think that's, that's very important. And those of you guys that are joining Marty Miller and I were talking about this multifaceted, you know, approach to your career and the opportunities that are available. And, you know, myself with Marty, I mean, we've, we've been in this industry for a while. We offer multiple different services, but I think that's what's been able to expand, you know, our ability to go out and teach internationally and teach, you know, um, teach nationally, be on these podcasts and webinars with you guys. Um, it's because it's the passion, the education and the persistence, they probably got tired of Marty and I saying, Hey, let us do this. We want to be able to make a difference. Like I, I want to be an educator and this is what I want to do. And so they, I think they just said, fine, just have at it. <laughs> Good luck. Get out of here. Go do you. Go do you. Be you. No, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So if we move on to the next slide here, why don't you tell us about, you know, diving deep. Yeah. So again, I like to schedule kind of um, periodical checks because sometimes you know, if you don't have it in your schedule, so I call it time blocking. So, you know, talking to my son about, you know, did you study? He's like, well, like, like, did you put it in your schedule? Did you, right? So, you know, you can look at it almost like we do our, you know, training cycles, right? You got micro, macro, meso cycles. So you can reevaluate sometimes daily because you see something that we say it pops up and all of a sudden off you're running at something else. Maybe you do it quarterly, maybe you do it yearly. But the key thing is, find something that allows you to force this to happen of reevaluating, especially once you get into the working environment and life starts to get even more chaotic, right? Like family and this and that it's sometimes a year, two years, three years goes by and you're just hanging on trying to get your CEUs and just continue on. So I purposely, purposely use Thanksgiving as one. It's easy for me because my birthday is always either on it or around it too. If I'm going to be thankful, I'm thankful for what I've accomplished. And now what do I want to accomplish in next year? So that's where, to me, I always do my yearly self-evaluation right around Thanksgiving because that gives me December to get ready because I want to hit January 1 with a plan already moving forward. So find something that works for you, whether you put it in your calendar, whether you have it up on your big dry eraser board, whether you have the sticky notes, I don't care, but don't think it's going to happen if you don't plan for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too, is are you doing what you love? Like Wendy and I, she said she wanted to get the hands on. I had that from my sports medicine. So I went and did this and that. And, you know, her and I are always exchanging ideas on what's next and what do we need to do? But she had a purposeful plan to add a skill set that gave her humongous opportunities that she wouldn't have had if she didn't do it. And then do you enjoy going to work? Or what I like to say is, I have a career. I don't have a job. And, you know, Wendy knows I've got a plan where I may want to retire at a certain age, but I doubt I ever will because I absolutely love what I'm doing. I love being in and around this industry, seeing it change, looking at it from the business side of things, watching and mentoring people and doing everything in ASM. So again, I may tone it up, tone it down, whatever, but this is where I need to be. Yeah. And I mean, and this is an honest, true story. Those of you guys that know me, I have like multiple jobs. I am like the gypsy woman with a thousand things going on. And so, you know, I teach full time. Three jobs. I know. Right. I mean, I we teach do. full time Actually. for a university. Yes. Uh, Marty and I are regional master instructors really? along with uh, Ken Miller. So he's also one of our regional master instructors. So we do a lot within you know, the organization of NASM, we obviously do these webinars and podcasts, we go off and we teach, and we're teaching the NASM, you know, methodologies and curriculum. I'm a mom, I mean, of course, that's a huge one. But then I also go and I actually still see clients, I work with all different clients, I do manual therapy, I do, you know, I do training, I train different people from, you know, CEOs, all the way to the professional athlete, and everywhere in between or every person in between. And the thing is, is people are like, you're going to have to give something up because you're just running out of time. And I really try to focus when I'm with my son, I'm with my son when I'm, you know, and that was hard for me to do because I couldn't find balance. I really had, and Marty, you know, this, I struggled with balance last year. And this year I sat down and said, I'm making live changes. 
And people are like, you should give a, give up going into the gym because, you know, I do that just so many days a week. But the thing is, is that's what keeps me sharp on my skills. And that's something that I love to do. I love my clients. I love their stories. And I love being able to change their mindset when they walk in that door to when they leave because they're moving better. They feel better. And it doesn't matter if it was a manual therapy session. It doesn't matter if it's a training session or I do combinations. And that's what this is. We're eventually going to start talking about is, is how do I do that? But the thing is, is that brings in personal money for my business. The other stuff, yes, I get my health insurance and benefits and I enjoy teaching. So I don't want to give up teaching for Cal U. I love it. I love that. But then again, I love being able to spend time with all these professionals that are within the NASM world because we have a reach to really have them be able to grow their business just like you and I did, Marty. We were there once. And unfortunately, we've been here for so long. We really want to bring more and more people in. So therefore, in 20 years, you guys are the ones that are sitting on this podcast and we're retired listening just to how incredible you are. Thank God we started so early. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. We started at 12. Could Something. barely walk, right? <laughs> didn't even understand what was going on. But no, I mean, that's, I think the thing is you and I both have three jobs, but there's no way we could give up either of them, right? So again, the career pathway, does your education support what you want to offer your client? So NASM does a tremendous job. They came out within the last, let's call it a couple of years, certified nutrition coach, the certified sport nutrition coach, the certified wellness coach, our flexibility specialist. I mean, there's always things they're not, I promise you, they're not doing this just to throw things out there. The career path that Wendy and I talked about earlier is expanding so rapidly and so quickly. NASM is always going to meet the demands of what our professionals want, need, and are asking for. So now you have a whole menu of options to look from. Maybe you go the path and get a manual license degree like Wendy did. Maybe you go back and get your master's degree and eventually your doctorate. Now there's so many choices online when you know, when we first started out, people looked at that as that wasn't the wisest way. But again, by pushing through and doing it, we've shown how valuable the extra, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, content is and the, the ability to get your degree online. So find your niche and you may have a couple niches and it may change depending on you may stumble into something you love. Make sure you take those courses and workshops. And again, it's an investment in your time and energy and effort. It's not an expense. Expenses are things I don't like paying. Investments, I, I actually look forward to. Education is an investment. And then you've got to connect with professionals doing what you want to offer. So again, find a mentor. Even if you're not physically going to be in their environment, you might follow people who put out true NASM content on social media. Maybe you call them and you pay them for a virtual session just to connect with them. Maybe you fly out to where they're at and spend a half a day with them. Doesn't matter. You just got to like I said, I wanted to be the dumbest person in that room of people that I aspired to be like. And I'm probably still the dumbest person. That's okay. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> working for me, right? Hey, that you might said have been it. my best kidding. decision ever. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you said it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> At least I own it. I'm okay with it. Oh, good with my that, goodness. Right? And, and then and you got to attack your strengths and your weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the most important thing. And Marty and I have always said that, too, because usually we're sitting in the same room together. Like, I cannot believe we're sitting, you, you know, we're sitting in this room with so and so and this person speaking. And oh, my goodness, like I remember when I first started, this person was it opened the door for me to do this. And, you know, and then it's like, you know, I hear other people saying, you know what, I really love what you and Marty do. How do you do it? And and I'm like, well, you know what you like you said, Marty, we invested our time. We invested, you know, the education. We put forth that effort in order. Like for me, I wanted to be the best of the best in whatever it was that I was doing. And I wanted to know how do I need to get there? And so I talked to the people that I aspired to be and I asked them for a path. And that's why I think that's really important because you have to have a path that's going to lead you to where you're going. If not, you're sitting there with a map and have no direction. And so, you know, that's what Marty and I, we try to do on these is to, to guide you guys into different, um, you know, avenues or clarify things where maybe you're stuck, but you've got to know what are your primary skills? What are you good at? And then at that point, maybe put those aside because you know that you're dialed there and think about the secondary skills of where do you want to go and what, what opportunities do you want to be able to provide, but maybe you're not there yet. And one thing that, that I want to, to focus on is yes, NASM opens the door to so many different courses and allows you guys to take different pathways in order to be good at it. 
but you're not going to have it as your primary skill or be the best until you apply it, you practice it, you do it multiple times until it becomes your primary skill. And so when we start talking about the next couple of slides, as we move forward, think about that. What is your secondary skills? How do you want to make them more of a, you know, your priority? And then at that point, what do you have to do to get there? Because then the door truly opens for you guys. Well said. Well said. Yes. And those of you guys that are joining Marty Miller and I, we're talking about this multifaceted approach to fitness and your career and, and, you know, looking for ways, which is what we're going to talk about, looking for ways to grow yourself, your business, the opportunities that surround you and, you know, and to really reach out into, you know, the areas that, that you want to grow in, in order to make yourself successful and don't just stay there. Don't be just, if you only have one certification and you're happy with it, where you are, that's fantastic. But the industry is still changing, always growing. So you want to be top of your game. So you're going to have to continue your education that way. But if you want to be different, I think it's important that we look forward to ways to expand what you're able to offer. Yeah. So when you look at the slide here, I mean, this is just a small sampling of some options. So as Wendy said, are you offering, a, you know, dual or multi-service? And again, you don't have to necessarily charge differently. But maybe your going rate is higher because you just are that impactful in so many different ways. So are you happy with what you offer? You know, how can you look to offer more and expand your reach? So just a few examples is obviously the certified personal trainer. Then you've got what Wendy did with licensed uh, muscular manual therapy and neuromuscular manual therapy. I'm a licensed athletic trainer. Those two right there, what her and I did, you got to go to a school. You're going to have to mm -hmm. spend time in front of a class and do hands-on stuff. Maybe you don't have the opportunity for that. You've got corrective exercise. You've got performance enhancement. We already talked about the certified nutrition coach and the certified sport nutrition coach, the wellness coach. These can com be combined. But then also, Wendy, as you know, these are the models that we follow for the most part. But then there's also, so that's kind of like the toolbox. But maybe you go out and get some certifications and understanding of different tools. Maybe you, I, I'm not huge with the Vipers right now. Maybe that would get me some ability to go in and do different things if I knew the Viper or suspension training or kettlebells. You know, so you can combine these structured educational systems with also some of the fitness tools are out there. And now you have ability to expand your reach because you're able to create more ex um, exciting programming or you're able to really highlight something that you weren't maybe that uh, strong in before. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but Wendy and I will always, always anchor to the academics because that is the way we make our decisions, the way we process information and the way we follow a path towards bettering our clients with any of these. And then there's also, again, the ability to go out and find a way to be better at the fitness tools in combination with these systems. And, and, and I want to get, provide like a little more like detail of, of what, what I mean by two with what Marty just said. So, you know, he's a, he's an athletic trainer in, in, again, I have my, you know, uh, massage therapy license and I went in and did neuromuscular therapy and that gives me the chance to go in and do manual therapy within my scope of practice. So when you think about a career opportunity, there are professional teams out there, for example, that, that would contact me. And I get, you know, I can actually make this a career if I want. I am hired full time by a, a sports team, for example. And Marty, you with your ATC can do this. And when you're in there, you're working, looking at your goniometer, range of motion or doing mobility assessments. You're finding out where the weakest link is. Is it based on range of motion? Is it under activity and muscles? How do I know all this stuff? Well, I have my CBT, I have my PES, I have my CES, and I'm looking at the body as a whole because we've focused in and concentrated on human movement and human, you know, just the human body itself and, and that solutions table and being able to do that. So it could be a career opportunity for you to be able to travel with these teams and work with these players and you're getting paid by one organization. Or you could take that same thing. And even if you didn't have like a license, you know, and you have your CES, your, your PES, your, your um, CPT, and you're having a gym that's wanting you to go in and teach their trainers how to implement different things and tools and how do you do this? You're, you're able to do that. Or you can work with clients on all different levels. Right. And so, you know, you can talk nutrition with them. You can be able to sit down as a whole and say, listen, I want to coach you here, but I want to train you here. And like you said, Marty, at that point, are you individualizing an hourly rate? 
Is it something that you do a, a whole, like you're doing for a month, you're charging this for a, like a package or a session, and this is all inclusive. And that's why I think it's important too, to think about what is it that you want to offer? Is it a career that you're going to try to implement all that you have into one company? Or is it something that you want to do for yourself, grow your own business, be, you know, be somebody that's different than the person next door that's offering the training. Yep. And, and I never chased the initials to have a, a business card. I chased it because I loved the knowledge and I knew mm -hmm. it would open doors. So again, I've worked in pro sports twice. If you're not an athletic trainer, guess what? You can't even sit for the, you, you can't even send in a resume, right? If they need a certified athletic trainer on staff, there's only 30,000 of us active in North America. So, you know, that is a limited uh, pool. So it gives you these opportunities that are unique. But what I loved about the multifaceted with what I do now for my full-time job, like we've got multiples, <laughs> is no matter who you put me in front of from a business standpoint, if you put me in front of a physical therapist, I can talk to them because my athletic training background, understanding of biomechanics, the stuff I've taken with NASM. If you walk me into a gym and I'm in front of more of a fitness minded group, I have the understanding, the terminology and the experience to, to connect with them. If you put me in front of a CEO, right, I've studied some of the business things. So it does like that is where at this point in my career, I'm well versed in the entire industry. So it's given me an opportunity to be able to speak and communicate to any type of professional I may come across, which, again, from a business standpoint, is crucial with what I do now. So I didn't plan that when I started out. I thought I'd work in professional baseball my whole career. But because I had that constant desire to get more education, before you know it, years later, now you've got a portfolio of work and knowledge that you can now start to apply all over. And the main I chose my doctor of health science was I didn't want a PhD in the sense that I didn't want to spend all my time, Wendy, as you talked about before, doing research. That was not my professional goal. My goal with Dr. Health Science is how can I understand research and apply it to the masses? So I could now get hired by the government, by big companies to understand the research and, and then have the ability to make massive change with implementation of the research. So that, again, Dr. Health Science wasn't that really known when I went to do it about 10 years ago, but it's becoming more and more impactful because look what's going on right now. We know that the comorbidities are a huge cause of a lot of problems. So how can we implement strategies on a mass scale? So that's why I purposely chose that compared to a PhD because my goal was not just to do research. <laughs> I said, well said. <laughs> so we go to the next slide here. Um, you know, you want to think, I, I think it's important to really focus on what it is that you want to do and then think about what are the services and be smart in your planning. As Marty says, he plans in November. I plan a little bit later because I want to kind of think, okay, you know what, and, and the next year, this is where I'm going to change, you know, my career and do this a little bit different, or my services are going to be this way. And maybe you've only done 30 minute sessions and you want to go to an hour, or maybe you've decided that you want to go from an hour to 30, 30 minutes. I said seconds, sorry, 30, 30 minutes. That'd be a really quick session. Um, and so I think it's important that when you're thinking about cost, because that's always the next question that I get, well, how do you charge for that? And that's really going to be up to you because what makes you different and what is it, what is your time worth? And so for me, if I'm doing an hourly session, this is what my hourly session is, whether I'm doing manual therapy, whether I'm doing coaching, whether I'm doing training. And, you know, if I have to do like a combination, then instead of it being a 60 minute session, and let's say I'm doing manual therapy with some of my pro athletes, I spend 30 minutes on the table with them. And then after that, I do an hour of a workout and work on their cool down and recovery because I put them in their boots and I, you know, we do all of that stuff. It's a 90 minute session. Obviously it's going to be a higher rate because it's more time. And so I try to think, you know what, when I'm scheduling things out, who is it like, who am I marketing to? What is it that I'm trying to do to help them? Am I in season because it's a it's a pro baller or is it somewhere that I'm going to have on a consistent basis because they're my CEO that wants to see me two or three times a week. And so at that point, you know, I don't do packages. However, packages are great for, you know, for for trainers that want to do that and know what their income is. 
but then you better be really smart on budgeting too because if you get this you know big amount of money at the beginning of every month for all the packages that you sell if they're reoccurring every month then you've got to make sure that you maintain your budget throughout the the month so you can still buy food in week four and so you know it's okay to increase your services i mean think about how quickly gas went up <laughs> how quick going to the grocery store like a loaf of bread is now even more i mean things you know we've got to think their life is getting more and more expensive and so with my clients they never balk at what my service rates are because i'm like listen this is what i charge this is what i do there's other trainers out there that mm -hmm. may be less however you want to go with them go with them but if you are going to increase your rates, I think it's very important that you give a heads up to your clients well in advance. Let them know like, hey, then, you know, it, it, maybe it's November or the end of October. You say, hey, in January, I'm going to actually start to increase my rates because you know what? It's getting more and more expensive for me to drive here. I'm having to put my kid, you know, in daycare or whatever it is. And they have two months to figure it out. And I'm telling you, you don't lose them if you have already earned their respect. Uh, that's great advice. And, you know, there's so many different ways you can go at this. The key thing, though, honestly, is have a plan. You know, just no matter what you want to do in this industry, get going, get started, but do those self checks, have that strategy. And then you're going to find no matter which way you end up going, like Wendy and I have made so many changes in our career, you're going to be moving forward that that I can guarantee you. It's just the people that I've seen get burned out in this industry they don't really work a plan after they get certified and then they either get in a rut or they don't make the money they thought they would do. And once I start talking to them, I'm like, okay, what's your plan? How did you, and they're like, well, I was training. I'm like, okay, that was step one. So this is that big next step of whether you find a mentor, whether you just put it in your calendar, whatever it is, but really try to work a plan and you're going to be much better off. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, you know, when we talk about marketing yourself, you know, like you want to master how you're marketing yourself as well. And so for me, you know, yes, I, you know, I am a licensed massage therapist. I focus mainly on neuromuscular therapy, which is different. I don't put people on my table. I don't, you know, massage them from head to toe. I don't do, you know, different types of, of things. I keep them dressed. I'm very pinpoint. I go in it and work on trigger points and trying to realign the muscle I'm fully clothed and then I move on. And so that that separates me. That's a big differentiator from from the other um, other services that that my counterpart, you know, some of my colleagues that I actually work in the gym with, they don't have that license to do it. So what do they do? They feed me business. Hey, can you help? You know, can you do a session with my client? And then I send them back to training. So we're also then working on referrals. Like, hey, I can't train today, but listen, I know you're amazing. So I give that training session to another trainer because I trust in their ability and I know they use the model and they understand what my programming is. However, you've got to be able to see yourself differently, be very secure, and you have to master what you have. And so, you know, for somebody to say, well, I'm a corrective exercise specialist, that doesn't really mean much to me because you know what? You should be able to know how to fix people. But what you can say is, listen, I can train anybody with any goal, anytime, any place. And so if I see that there's some compensation, I can fix that to make you move better, feel better and perform better. And so therefore you need to come to me because I have all of these these, um, you know, credentials. I've spent time working this model. I can show you that it works. There's research behind it. And I can believe I 100 percent believe I can help you be the best you that you want to be, except for you have to commit and you have to be a part of the plan. And. And so at that point they're sold and I didn't do anything other than say, this is what I do. And this is why I'm the best. But if I wouldn't believe that I'm the best, if I didn't practice it. And so you've got to practice it. Don't just get your certification. Don't just take a specialization, then apply it to make yourself the best. And yeah, then I so, think you can market it. And then Wendy, before we move on to the next slide, I think one of the big things that we've always seen is people get certified and then they almost forget why they got certified through NASM. The, the information's there. It's going to be your best friend. So get in there after you're certified and continue to practice what you learned. And then you'll see how much more knowledge you're going to continue to grow with as you start to apply it to different people at different times with different tools. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, can you tell I'm super passionate? I'm like starting to get sweaty no, right now. I'm like, no, yeah, well, you can I, do this. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen you talk about this topic that way in the last 17 years. I 
I know, right? I think, I mean, and it brings us to our takeaways, guys. You have to set specific career goals. You have to know where you want to go in order to grow. And then you have to look at those goals when you're looking at it at a piece of paper. Okay, what education do you need to support those goals to get you wherever it is you want to be? And then you've got to educate yourself and then you've got to apply it. And then at that point, when you become a master of this and you feel comfortable with that, and if you're using this specific modality, then maybe you contact that company, like, let me be your representative. Let me be your ambassador, you know, grow yourself, you know, on social media if you need to. And then at that point, when you start to gain momentum, then you can start to adjust your prices because you are differentiating yourself and you're becoming, you know, making a name for who you are and what you represent. And then therefore, as you're increasing your rates, you start, you know, marketing who you are, but you have to 100% believe that you are the best of what you're, what you're able to do. And you have to be confident into your knowledge. And if you use the model, there is no reason you shouldn't have that confidence because we've done the, re not me, NASM's done the research and we've been a part of it. And like I said, Marty and I have done this since 2005. We have been master instructors since 2005. And I've used this model since 1999, before it was even implemented into NASM. So before yes. any of you were born, I thought that's before. Sure. Well, probably that too, unfortunately, <laughs> as I get older. Um, but I'm just saying, you know what, we, we believe in it and we do this because it works, but you have to apply it and you have to be confident in what you, what, you know, what you're able to do um, and why you're doing it. Yeah. And the only thing, you know, to, I, I could echo every single thing when he said, but going back to the career goals or education goals is this always stuck with me. Look, if you look at Google maps, you put in your starting point, you put in your destination and then the rest fills in. But if I just go out and I start driving with no destination, how do I know if I'm ever going to get there? So that's why I really think that uh, hopefully one of the key takeaways is you do a self-evaluation, see where you're at, see where you want to get and start to create that roadmap. And again, there's going to be just like in Google maps, there's going to be, Hey, there's a faster way here or the, Hey, there's a detour there, but you're moving towards a direction and a goal because you set in your final destination. And that's, I think, where I see a ton, a ton of um, people get burned out in the industry because they never really truly focus on what's next. They get caught up in the now and then that now lasts five or seven years. Yes. And then they say, I just feel like I'm in either Groundhog Day or I'm a hamster on a wheel. It's just the same thing every day. I'm like, you know what? Every single time I walk into the gym, it's never the same program, never the same. I mean, maybe the same people, but I right. love my beeps. If I didn't love them, then I fire them. If I'm give them to someone else. You know what? Right. You got to love what you do. You got to love who you associate with. And you got to be proud of, of, you know, being, you know, part of NASM because obviously we are. <laughs> Without a doubt, or we wouldn't be here 17 years. So. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, stop well, saying that. It was really, there's people, I mean, seriously, there were people that are just now driving. They were born when we started and now they're learning to drive. You realize this. That's my kids. Like I know. I, know. I showed you the picture on Facebook when they were in my shirts and they were like dresses. And now they're like, y you saw that. I know. I'm telling you, Marty, you're old. <laughs> I stopped having birthdays this year. So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going to okay. say I haven't figured. Okay. Yeah. I forgot to tell you that part. But but anyway, if you guys want to contact us, you can always email me at wendy.bats at nasm.org. I know that our wonderful um, Eric will put this up here, our producer. Or you can find me on Instagram at wendy.bats13. And then my information, shockingly, will be very similar. Marty.Miller at NASM.org for email. And then Instagram is dr.martymiller72. So we hope that this was impactful, motivating, and maybe helping you do a reset and look at your career in a whole nother way. So for all of you that joined us, thank you so much, Wendy. Great information. Great topic. I'm glad you thought of this one. I think it's something we have to address. And then more than anything else, we can't wait to see you all again very soon on the next Master Instructor Roundtable.